What's going on, Bitwise guy here, coming at you with the Rust uh, fourth tutorial in this uh, Rust tutorial installment series. Um, so let's get started. So, um, as always, let's make our new project. So, say cargo new um, mods and impulse, and we shall CD into here. All right. So, as you guys can tell, it's a little bit late, and I have work in the morning, so um, if I'm a little bit tired, I'm really sorry about that, but this is pretty much the only time I'm going to get to um, put out this video, so, um, yeah. So, um, what we'll do is we will CD into our source directory. Alright, so, <clears throat> as always, Cargo has generated us a, uh, I should say, scaffolded us a project, um, we're given a lib.rs file and a cargo.toml file. The cargo.toml file is sitting uh, in one directory above uh, the source directory. Now, what a module essentially is in um, in cargo, I mean, sorry, in Rust, um, it is essentially like a namespace. So if you're familiar with, um, uh, say, C++ or C Sharp, uh, you'll be familiar with the concept of a namespace, but if you're not, um, that's fine. So essentially, what a namespace or a module is, is it's a way of um, it's a way of putting a name to a package. So if you imagine that you have a box, um, and your company makes that box and the stuff inside of it, um, then this is essentially just a it's just a box with uh, all your stuff in it. Um, so, there are a few ways that you can define modules in Rust. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to be going with the simplest way of defining um, a, um, <clears throat> a module. Uh, so, the Rust C compiler has a few kind of um, patterns that it searches for when looking for your module files. The one that we're going to be using today is um, module name as the folder, and then the file name is going to be mod.rs. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the new directory. We're going to say mkdir, um, and we'll call this one um, sample underscore module. Uh, Rust seems to be very big on camel case, so um, we'll stick to that. And we'll say cd sample, excuse me, sample module. And um, I have this very weird habit of clearing the console constantly, so sorry about that. And we'll say touch um, mod dot rs. Uh, it's very important that you call that file mod dot rs in, uh, in the scenario which we're going through at the moment. Um, so let's, next what we'll do is we'll say uh, nano, uh, actually let me use sudo because um, my config for nano is um, written to the file system <clears throat> with a uh, root account I believe. I think, yeah, because I installed it with sudo. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing is um, we've now created a module. So creating a module in Rust is pretty much that simple. Now we have to actually define the contents of our module. So in this case, we're going to be making a very simple implementation. Um, now implementations are kind of like classes. Now Rust doesn't have a concept of classes. and if you're a programmer coming from somewhere like C Sharp or C++, um, it's going to be very difficult to kind of um, detach yourself from wanting to um, couple everything into the one class. Uh, there is a push within the community for very specific circumstances to want to have um, some sort of abstraction and orient, uh, you know, um, inheritance uh, within the implementations, but um, that doesn't really exist. The closest thing that you can really get to uh, an abstract class is a trait. Uh, and we'll cover those in another video. So what we're going to do is we're going to be saying um, pub struct, um, and we'll, we'll say this is a sample, uh, sorry, sample struct. Now you'd be wondering, um, well, why did I use uh, camel case for this, um, but I used snake case for um, the directories? Um, and that's because objects, as I call them, um, so structures and implementations, uh, they ch they tend to follow um, they tend to you know more follow the uh, syntax of having 
uh, camel case. I don't know why, that's just kind of what the uh, community has decided on. So we'll say um, my name string Righto, so we're just having a super simple struct. Now let's make our implementation. So the keyword to define an implementation is impl and then the identifier. So the identifier um, is going to be the same as our struct, so it's going to be sample. Um, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have named that struct, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it should be sample um, impl, and the impl is sample impl. just like that. Now, um, the Rust community tends to not call this a factory, and it's technically not a factory uh, method. Um, however, the, the simplest way that I can explain it, and we'll cover this in other greater detail in the next <clears throat> couple of tutorials as to why this is not technically correct, um, but if you're used to factories, this is essentially a factory method. It will return you a new instance of your sample implementation. So, the syntax for that is pub fn for function new and new is just a convention um, you can have whatever you want create new um, it doesn't really matter um, and we'll say um, name and its type of string um, and the most important thing is that it returns a um, sample impl so the return type is sample impl and um, and the actual return statement here is uh, sample impl Whoops. Uh, sample impl, and we will um, initialize our struct um, to be um, my name. So we'll initialize that parameter to be the name parameter in our quote unquote constructor. Um, it's not really a constructor, but um, we just call them constructed methods. All right, so that's pretty much all we need for actually creating an implementation, but we actually, this this won't really do anything. It'll simply return us a new instance of the implementation. So let's make a new function, and we'll make this another hello world function. We'll say pub fn hello underscore world. Now, the difference between a, um, a constructor method uh, or a static method, so this is really a static method, um, the difference between a static and a non-static method in Rust is non-static methods take the um, the parameter of self as the first parameter. Uh, and after that, um, they don't have to take any other parameters. So this means that there must be an, this, this object must be instantiated um, in order to use this method here. Now, the way that that's enforced is actually quite logical. This method takes a reference to the object itself. And so if it's unable to access the, the object that's sitting in memory, then it doesn't make sense to be able to use this method. Since considering inside of here, I can do, which we'll do in a second, self dot, I have to be able to access the currently instantiated um, object. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna say um, print ln macro, and we're gonna say uh, my name is, and um, we'll do, like this, and we'll say like, whoops, my bad, and we'll say like this, and then we'll take the parameter of self dot my name, and that's essentially just a string replace just there. All right, so um, that's pretty much all we need uh, for our implementation. Um, so what I'll do, and I do have notes next to me um, because uh, I like to keep things running nice and smoothly. Um, so we'll save that and we'll exit and we will go up one directory. All right, so let's go and we'll say nano, uh, we'll say touch uh, main.rs and we will go sudo nano main.rs. All right, and what we'll do is we need to say mod um, sample underscore, I think it was sample mod, um, Rust will obviously complain if that's not correct. And then we will say use sample underscore mod. And we will say, um, I think it was sample mod, but let me just quickly check that. My memory is terrible, so <clears throat> I'm really sorry about that. Um, pseudo nano. Um, 
sample module mod.rs. It was sample impl, my bad. So we'll exit this. So sample mod sample underscore, sorry, sample impl. Righto. So um, basically, what these two statements do is we'll put some comments here. We'll say this statement imports the module. So Rust C will say, hello, I see a module named sample underscore mod that you're looking for and it will go sample mod um, in this directory is there a folder called sample underscore mod and if so does that folder contain a um, file called mod.rs and then it will take it'll open that file it'll take the contents of that uh, and then what this does is this is kind of like using in fact not kind of it's kind of like using namespace std from C++. So that's just the using statement. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say fn main since that's always our entry point in Rust. And we'll say let x, um, actually we'll say let my object equal to uh, sample impl new and we'll say um, what should we make this? Uh, mat just like this, and let's put some indentation there, and we'll say my object dot, what did we say? I think it was hello. Uh, I actually can't remember, but let's just save this. I'll come back to that in a second. So we'll say cargo build, and make sure we've got no build errors. No module sample mod. Uh, what did we do, what did we do, what did we do? Ah, whoops. Completely wrong. So we'll say this should be sample module, my bad. So this should be sample module. <clears throat> and this should be sample module. And we'll say save that. And cargo build. And um, mismatch types. Ah, whoops. One more thing I forgot actually. Um, we need to say dot two underscore string. And. Um, I'll explain that just after this. So let's get that to build. Cool. Righto. Whoops. Sorry, I make a lot of mistakes in this tutorial, guys. All right, so let's go back into our mod.rs. Now we've got a function called hello world. So what we can do is we can actually now call that from our main thing. So we'll say my object dot hello underscore world just like that and we'll save that exit and we'll say cargo run and there you go so I'm really sorry about all the mistakes guys I am absolutely exhausted but I wanted to get this tutorial out to you um, and just quickly while we're here and I remember um, we'll do pseudo main so essentially um, What's happening here is um, this in Rust is basically um, a, it's a string, but it means it, the the actual type when you type that in uh, and pass it in as a method is str. Um, but the parameter that we took was actually string, which is part of the standard template library. And so what to string does is it essentially converts um, string to a string reference. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully my next tutorial will be a bit more lively, but I haven't put one out in Asia, so I really wanted to put one out for you guys. Um, thanks. Rate, subscribe. Um, <clears throat> tell me if it was shit. Tell me what you want to see next. Um, dislike if it was shit, because I hate positive feedback when it's not good. Um, and that's about it. Cheers.